At Executive Chat, we're going to meet Emma Marcegaglia, President and CEO of Marcegaglia Group. Emma, welcome back to Bocconi. Thank you for the invitation. It's my honor to be here. So let me get started with a question on the fact that you are president and CEO of a 5 billion euro corporation, a multinational that has more than 6,000 employees. What have been the core challenges during this year of pandemic? You know, the challenge is that uh, we found ourselves in an unprecedented situation. We saw people dying. Our company was closed because of the lockdown and we were the first in the Western, in the Western world. Uh, you know, our people were afraid because they, they asked us not only save my job, but also save my family, try to help me. So what happened is that uh, we became much more resilient. We became very agile because, you know, we were in a situation where every day there was a new challenge. You know, one day the transport were not uh, uh, functioning, another day when customers said well I don't want to buy your tubes because there is the COVID you know, in the tube you know it was a crazy situation but we uh, learned to be very agile very resilient we understood that uh, you know the most important thing was to stay with our people you know protect our people and our people were so passionate to work with us to try to you know to solve the problem so at the end I think uh, what we learned is that uh, you know the core values of your companies your people the fact to be agile, to understand, you know, before, me, before other people what the market was, the world was doing. And so at the end, I, I think we exit from this uh, stronger, more resilient and very uh, united with our people. So resilience, agility, uh, values and of course people. Uh, you are president of uh, the uh, B20, which is the global business forum of the forthcoming G20 uh, Italy 21. What do we have to expect from the panels? Yeah, you know, as you said, we put together uh, or we gather together the most important corporates and business people from all over the world. The idea that we want really to contribute uh, to going back to a recovery, a growth, which is different from the, from the past one. So more resilient, more sustainable, more inclusive, but also where competitiveness as, is at the core. And the idea is really to uh, give a policy recommendation, very concrete, uh, where there are clear action on that, not, not very long papers, very nice, but really try to be very concrete with KPIs where we want to go. And really also, on the other hand, take commitment on ourselves for more inclusiveness, more sustainability, a fight to climate change, where I think a lot of investment and commitment has to be taken by the company. So uh, I think uh, this is a very good opportunity also for Italy, where we, you know, we can also show on an international uh, you know, scenario our excellencies, our leadership, uh, and so it's also a good opportunity to, to see that, to, to make uh, you know, clear that Italy is a great country with a lot of leadership. What you just said makes a lot of sense also for business schools. Business schools have been oftentimes criticized in the recent times for what they teach. And uh, what you have just said, I think it makes a lot of sense. You've been president of a business school. Yes, I think it's very important uh, that we uh, uh, teach also to business people uh, that it's important, of course, to have a very competitive company because otherwise it's not possible to, to go on, but also that we have to take commitment on uh, inclusion. Social inclusion is key on sustainability, you know, also, also from a climate change point of view. And we have to be part of it. We, 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 we have to be part of how to solve the problems. Uh, and also I think it's very important that business people l teach to, you know, business people to be very open-minded, to, to be able to understand what's going on, to be very fast, to adapt. Uh, and so, you know, I think uncertainty was, you know, very clear in the, during the pandemic, but in my opinion, we will have a lot of uncertainty also in the next year. So a very good business person has to be open-minded and understand how to face uh, uh, difficult, different and difficult situation. You've had an impressive career, Emma, and by the way, you have been the youngest and first woman president of Confindustria, the Association of Manufacturing and Service Businesses in Italy. What are we still missing to close the gender gap? Well, I think, uh, first of all, you know, here we are in one of the most important universities in the world. I think education is still key. 
uh, we still have uh, not enough uh, educated uh, women. I, st I heard uh, still, you know, women saying, uh, I'm not good in math, I'm not good in engineering. So I think education is still a very important point. The second is that probably we still need some laws to support women in their career and also in, the, in their being mother. Uh, and so this is also important, but probably the most important thing is leadership. I think uh, we should work on that. There are good role models. We should also try to, you know, to make a good me mentoring. I would like really to, uh, you know, to help uh, some uh, uh, younger women and say, if you have a dream, go on. Don't be shy. Don't, uh, you know, you, you have to go on with your ideas and your dreams. And so I think also it's very important also to teach in a very important universities, you know, women leadership, uh, because this could also help, uh, you know, this uh, gender gap to be widened and to be closed. What you say makes a lot of sense. We are already doing that, but uh, it's a long way to go, as you said. So Emma, thank you so much for visiting us today and I look forward to hosting you on campus with our students. Thank you so much. It was my pleasure and honor and I will be very glad to be back here with you and the students. Thank you.